Hello and welcome. I am the Suit and Tie Dip and Shoe Guy, and this is the 27th review of series number 11, N.A. Market Snooze. That is the playlist. It is series number 11, North American Market Snooze. That playlist and another review from it will pop up on screen in the last 20 seconds of this video. As for the product, this is the new Copenhagen Spit Free. Now, there is actually no mention of snus on this can, but I am pretty sure that's what this would be considered in the North American context. So, this comes to me thanks to Toy Obsessed out in Washington State. He is the one that sourced this. The shipping and price for the product was covered by donations. If you would like to make a small one-time donation for content such as this, you can find the pay link down in the description area. I thank you for your consideration. So, he sent both products out to me, and you'll be seeing the next one next week. This is the Blue. So, this is Copenhagen Spit-Free Blue. That may or may not be from another product line within United States Smokeless Tobacco Company, but in a Copenhagen can. So we're gonna take it over to the desk, take a closer look at the packaging and the product inside, and then we'll bring it back up top to see what I think. Back in a moment. Okay, so here we are. Um, I actually don't like the can, and it's a little bit odd too. Um, black, shading that U.S. Smokeless Tobacco Company has used in the past. I've actually liked, however, this has no shading. I also like when they've gone with very near flat or flat cans. For whatever reason, they did not decide to highlight Copenhagen in a different color, but they did decide to emboss it. It is raised. So is, as with every product they seem to come out with, the border, there's a slight raise in between the upper and the warning label. So everything else is flat to the can. You can just barely make out the 1822. There you go. Copenhagen is showing a little bit, but that's only because the paint would seem to be rubbing off this can because when the can got to me from Toy Obsessed, it was absolutely immaculate. And now... I, it's It's been in a refrigerator. I haven't really handled it much. So, then we have the spit-free and pouches. No mention of snooze. Going around to the side, first person to get it, use it, I suppose. You have the scrunched warning label that's going all the way around. You have them saying that the rewards now are 21 plus. You have branding. Blue mint pouches. The other one is green mint pouches. Notice how they don't even say mint on the front. It's sort of... Okay, anyway. And then you have manufacturer's information, which this is a product of the U.S. Smokeless Tobacco Company, headquartered out of Nashville, Tennessee, the net weight is 0.58 ounces, which is 16.5 grams for those overseas. It is smokeless tobacco under age sales prohibited. It is tax class M. So it is tax class the same as dip. Sales only allowed in the United States. And it is 100% American tobacco. So for that, they get a point. Then you have the barcode and we're back around to the code. Going to the back, you have their standard guaranteed fresh stamp can, and then you have a date that's way out. Now, this is a lot farther out than any dip product that they have. I mean, even if you get one that's real fresh, this, this is farther out than any can normally would be, even if you got it right off the production line, uh, which I can't say I can think of another product that U.S. Smokeless Tobacco Company makes that does... Oh, you know what? I can think of one. 
Skull Snus. Skull Snus will have dates like that. Hmm. Anyway, we'll move on here and open it up. It's got a rubbery band. It's got like an American Snuff Company band on this thing, which I immediately don't like. I don't, I don't even know if it's cutting, to tell you the truth. I'm trying. Okay. Okay, it did, it did cut. And there we go. Now, that gives you an idea of what's embossed on the lid. This is sort of interesting. It almost looks like... Nah, that must just be some... It almost looks like it, it was... an easy cut rim, but I'm not... I'm not sure what would do that unless it was the plastic. I don't know. I'll have to check it out before we do the green one a little closer. A little too late now for this one. So you have some pretty good size pouches here. They are going to be a lot bigger than any actual Swedish snooze product. Even the larger ones don't quite come to this. Uh, and I will take a count when we switch to go back up top, but I'm guessing there's probably 15 in here. I guess we can... Two... Four... Five, six, seven... Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve... Thirteen... Fourteen... 15, which is standard for U.S. smokeless tobacco company pouch products. I didn't see why it would really be different, not at this size. Uh, as far as the product itself, it is probably bone dry, I am guessing. And it is. It is so dry that the pouch material is actually clinging to the paper towel. So with that... We will take this back up top and I will let you know what I think. But in reality, you already know what I think. I think this, and I'm about to find out, I think this is Skull Snooze put in a different can. And they dropped Snooze out of the title name because they thought that would turn off guys, the type of guys that use Copenhagen. It is a pretty darn strong peppermint, all right? So the blue is going to be peppermint, and if this holds out the way I think it is, the green will be spearmint. So I'll throw one in. So this is sort of a mix. You know what? To tell you the truth, I'm... Uh, Although I'm still pretty sure. The, the the problem here is I haven't had Skull Snooze for probably since the last time I did a review of it. Which could be years at this point. So I don't know if they toned down that product. But what's coming off to me right now is that this is the same product. But the absolute insane blast of mint that I remember in the Skull Snooze product is not happening here. So, look, th this is sort of a mixed bag as far as what I think. And it's, it, you know, it, it, it's not all bad. It, th there, there are some good aspects. Number one, you know, they have a product that is clearly marked as a sell-by date, okay? That is a plus. The product is spitless. It's pretty darn dry. You do get a little bit of mouthfeel because of the mint plus... I, they, they may have a little bit of menthol on this. I'm not quite sure. Nicotine is there, all right? 
and it's probably going to be stronger than, let's say, if you picked up camel snooze. It'll be the same as skull snooze, somewhat unironically, but it'll it'll be it, it'll be stronger than the camel snooze, even when you get it in the larger pouch. The flavor's okay. I actually, for a short period, when I got cut off from Swedish snooze, when I was in my sort of mixed through stage of stopping manufactured cigarettes, starting pipe smoking, not dipping all the time inside using snooze. At one point I got cut off from the Swedish stuff and I actually used Skull Snooze. So, I'm not a mint guy, as I've said. I don't really have anything against it. I'm just sort of like, ah, you know, if I wanted mint, I would eat a mint. Chew gum. Or, you know, whatever. The mint here is very, very present, and there's not too much tobacco behind it. It is spit-free. And from a dipper's perspective, which most of us are here on this channel, the pouch size is closer to what you would be used to dip-wise. All right? But you can do anything you want with it. You can slide it around. I got it right here right now. I got it back here right now. You know, you can make it very, you know, you're not going to be able to really see it all the way back like that. So, I understand that, you know, there are situations where it's important that people don't have to spit. If you're in a situation like that, but you want something dip-sized, this or Skull Snooze is probably your best bet. They're going to have more nicotine. I'm not saying they have a lot of nicotine. Don't don't get me, you know, don't get it twisted there. But they're going to have more than Camel Snooze. They feel, you, you know it's there. It's not like some nicotine pouch that's so small that you forget it's in your mouth and then you lose it and you're like, all right. Although I'm not quite overly keen on the aspect where they've tried to pull a fast one sort of here and like, okay, Skull Snooze sales were dipping and now we're just going to put it in a different can and see how we can go with the Copenhagen crowd, which I'm pretty sure is not going to work. Like, that all said, they did not come out with Copenhagen nicotine pouches, so they deserve props for that, okay? So they haven't completely debased. Yeah, I don't know how much, uh, and, and that's why they're not, they don't have snooze on the can. That, that's, that's why. They're just saying spit, it's Copenhagen, but it's spitless. That's why, because they know Copenhagen guys are going to be like, what? Snooze? So, in a way, there's been a lot of thought put into this, but in a couple other ways, not so much. Like this lid. Like, I don't know who designed this lid or thought it was a good idea, but I, I don't like it. I'm, I'm, I do not like it. Um, like, they're, they've almost, like, obscured Copenhagen. They've, they've raised it off the lid, but they don't want you to really... Okay, we don't really want to attach this to our brand name because it's spitless. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, what? why? Test marketing. Did anybody get test marketing of this? Like, is this everywhere? Did they just like, okay, you know what, we're going to, you know, we're going to do the reserve thing and it didn't work out nationally. So now we're going to say it's in select markets. What about, what should we do with the skull pouches that we put in the, the, the Copenhagen cans? Oh, we're going to release that nationally. Like <laughs> what happened? Um, as for the product itself, again, it is actually spitless. That's going to be a big selling point. It is actually tobacco. They should be given credit for that. 
nicotine is there. It's not going to be high, but it's there, and there's probably enough to get you through whatever situation. All in all, I feel like it's a rushed product, but at the same time, I can't say it's not quality because Skull Snooze was quality. I, I just moved on from that time in my life. So, in some ways it feels rushed, and in other ways it seems very familiar. But the big thing is, it is spitless, as you've said. Now, I do have a little cuss over here. I do not need it. The mint seems like it's toned down to me. From what I remember of the Skull Snakes, the, the mint was just like, blow your brains out, peppermint. And this doesn't seem like that. So that's actually, in my mind, a good thing. Not to say there's no flavor. There's a lot of peppermint. I, there's a lot. It, it was just that a decade ago, the skull snooze was just like out of control. Like, what are they trying to hide with this overblown flavor? And this isn't coming off. Again, though, you're not really getting any tobacco underneath it, flavor-wise. So that are, that's my thoughts on this. You know, it, it, it's not bad. It's not great. Um, it's, a, it's a questionable business model move or business decision on U.S. Smokeless's part, but, you know. So this has been my review of Copenhagen Spit-Free Pouches. Blue Mint. It is peppermint. It has Skull Classic levels of nicotine. It is Spit-Free. It is dated way out, and although I don't like the lid, the packaging is sound. It is a metal lid, all right? It's just, it, you know, it's not a product I really need, but you know what? Every time I've said that, ever, I've come into a situation very soon after where I was like, where is that can? I can't spit where we're going, type deal, so. Copenhagen, spit-free pouches. Blue Mint. I am the Suit and Tie Dippin' Chew Guy. I do thank you all for watching. As always, do take care of yourselves, and God bless.